my friends, and welcome back to Player Display. I am so happy to be rid of that stupid, horrible cardboard box that was my original camera stand, along with this sandwich clip. So, say goodbye. You're probably never going to see this again, because now I've got a tripod, baby. And this setup came in just in time for me to start a brand new playlist, which will be custom action figure showcases, which are not quite tutorials because the figure is kind of already done, so the best I can really do is show you the figure and basically just tell you about how I put it together so you could do it yourself. So for this very first showcase, we'll be looking at what I call the Star Wars The Black Series Mandalorian Offworld Jawa Version 2. If any of you know anything about the Star Wars Black Series Jawas, they look really good, but functionally, they're not that great. So over here, I have Tika, who is the latest Jawa release, and he's a very good-looking figure, as you can see, and it's pretty consistent across all the Jawas they've done. Um, the issue, though, is the articulation, which really stops them from doing things that you'd probably want a typical Jawa to do. I believe that we've thus far seen four Jawas being the original Jawa, which I think might have been released on retro card packaging. Then we got the off-world Jawa, as we have right here with the nice soft goods. We also got the Kenner Tribute Jawa, which was more of this brown color, but with soft goods to sort of bring back that 1970s Kenner feel. And then we got to Tika from the Kenobi show. He's a peddler. He's not going to be wielding weapons and stuff. He's just going to be kind of selling his wares, which I don't have at the moment. But uh, you, you definitely cannot get any of these Jawas uh, dual wielding any weapons. You can barely get them single wielding weapons. So they look really good. They're nice background pieces, but they're not very functional, especially when you have the Jawas like Tika here who do not have soft goods. And then you get what's called an action figure community traffic cone syndrome. And that basically means you get very solid plastic in place of the cloth. And that basically inhibits any leg articulation completely. Granted, the figure looks great and everything. I mean, it's a beautiful figure to look at, but there's just not a whole ton that you can do with these Jawas. And the most functional that we've gotten, debatably, are the Kenner one, which is not that easy to get, and the Offworld Jawa, which isn't the traditional Jawa. But personally, I kind of like the black cloak that he had, and I wanted to see a Jawa move around for once. I think I previously mentioned when I did my Omega review that I scrapped a, an Omega figure in order to produce this more highly articulated Jawa that we have here. And Omega's pretty cheap. I think she is on sale at Amazon, and rightfully so. I mean, it's a very small figure, not a whole ton of accessories. Perfect custom fodder for our Jawa here. So when it comes to showcase videos like this that aren't tutorials where I'm showing you like a step one, step two, and etc. When I'm demonstrating to you how to modify a figure or whatnot, the fact of the matter is the figure's already done, isn't it? So I guess the way that we're going to run this show is I'm going to first show you who I have and what it does, what sort of features that I've added to them, if any, and then sort of show you the figures that went into creating this figure and give you just a basic step-by-step -step guide as to how I did it in case you want to do something like this for yourself. And of course, whenever it comes to customizing, there's never a right or a wrong way of doing a figure, but it's nice to see various examples so you could think of a method that works for you best or create one of your very own. And in this case, I kind of went my own route here. So let's have a look at our version 2 off-world Jawa. As you can see, he's not visually too different from the Jawas that we have been seeing, except, of course, he's got the full, um, more screen-accurate cloth soft goods, which I vastly prefer over the sculpted details. You can see up here, you got a really nice head sculpt. Um, that's mostly the same, except I did some sand weathering. I actually want to kind of dull that down a little bit with some more brown on top, so I think it's a little bit heavy-handed. But the best part that I did with this Jawa here is, you remember a little torch here from our Doc Ock customizing journal? And put it right to each eye, just for a few seconds each. Let them go for a little bit. And then you get glow-in-the-dark eyes, which I think is kind of an essential for any Jawa. You can see it right there. It's very spooky. So that's something that was an absolute must when I thought about customizing my figure. Um, it requires a very special, though very obtainable, glow-in-the-dark paint. Um, I'll drop a link in the description for it. One thing that I do want to mention, I can't remember the name of the paint off the top of my head, but it is very 
much best when used for accent work. You don't want to do whole surfaces because you'll notice that there's a very certain consistency about it where you want to do just a little bit at a time. You're not really going to get brush strokes out of it, so you can get it in like small crevices. You can do little dots like I have here, and it can do some really nice stuff with your figures. So in this case, we have a Jawa with glowing eyes. Going down to everything else, everything else that we have going on, um, there's really not going to be any rhyme or reason or formula to how we do these showcases. I'm just going to talk about the figure, and if I did something interesting to it, then we'll go ahead and talk about it. So, of course, the first thing you see is that we have the Jawa's trademark straps, which are kept pretty much original from the original off-world Jawa figure that I had. And I did some light weathering pretty much on the belt and basically throughout the rest of the figure. So I also did it on the soft goods, a little bit on the hood, as we talked about before. And that just makes him have a more lived-in off-world feel that I think works a lot more in his favor or her favor. Who the hell knows? And then also down in the arms, you can see if we remove his little ion black for a second. You can see that that entire bulky sculpt that has been with every single doll you've seen this far is gone. Like if we pull back the sleeve, you can see it's nice and slender and now we can get the arm moving in a lot of new directions that we couldn't before because this entire body, as I said, is from Omega. So I'll talk about how I crafted that when we are finished looking at this figure, but ultimately this entire custom was on the premise of getting rid of that old, very dated Jawa body, which was driving me absolutely bonkers. Also, the hands are a lot better, too. Um, again, these are Omega hands, but I repainted them. I also sprayed them, so now it looks like they're kind of gloved. And now you can see you've got up and down articulation on this hand, which again, as I've said before in many videos, is more ideal for a blaster-wielding character. So that's a very nice plus that we have going for us there. I also painted the sleeves, although when I sprayed the sleeve and then I started weathering the cloth, I was a little bit rambunctious, so I kind of rubbed off the brown, so just ignore that little spot of red, I gotta fix that, but that'll be easy, just a few brush strokes and that'll be gone. On this hand, this is also in and out, kind of like the Jawa, but it's positioned in a better way, so that way when he does hold the ion blaster, then it just looks better for a... Uh, two-hand holding blaster position. I also like the gesture it's in, like he can either be uh, reaching for a droid or maybe asking for credits on the street or something like that. And going on down to the legs, another thing that I really appreciated about the off-world Jawa with having the soft goods is that was the first time you could really get a good proper look at the rest of the body. And of course, this is the Omega body, but now we can get down here and see a little bit more details. Like you can see I've got a little bit of weathering here. I think that was actually unintentional. I think the paint kind of just bled through uh, the cloth and then it got its way onto the base figure. But the important thing that I wanted to highlight is down here at the feet where I used actual soft goods from the soft goods and this is a very simple life hack if you're a customizer. So whenever you get a cloak or a cape or something like that you're going to find stitches on the inside when you reverse a shirt or a cloak and then when you get to these stitches there's going to be some excess cloth coming out here um, just to give a little bit of freeway for when the manufacturers are stitching up these cloths or would it be machines that do it i'm not really sure but basically if you take a scissor and you mind where the stitches are you can actually get these nice little straps of spare cloth that you can use as bandages or a little scarf belts holsters just little tiny things that you can use to accent your figure so what i use the straps for is i cut them off and then I wrap them around the feet with a little bit of glue, and now he has a more tactile looking uh, set of boots, which looks a lot nicer, I think. And they, they're just a lot more consistent with the overall aesthetic of this figure. Another thing I should mention is that I completely replaced the um, plastic cord that goes to this secondary ion blaster that he has holstered in the back. Um, sorry, I was pointing the wrong thing, but this guy right here. And I replaced it with kind of an elastic string, so that way it folds out of the way. Um, it drapes a little bit more naturally. And also, another concern I had with this figure, and all the Jawa figures for that matter, is this holster is a little bit tight for this particular ion blaster. I was always scared that if you're pulling it out, then that little rod right there is going to warp, it's going to break, it's going to snap. So the workaround I found is that if you get wire trimmers or an X-Acto knife or something like that and just do a little slit back here on the holster, you can actually peel it back 
pull out the blaster without worrying about damaging it, even though it's a little bit finicky, and then the holster just goes right back in place, and that's nice because it's a pretty thick plastic, and while it's not too malleable, it's just enough so that it's not going to lose its shape, and it's also going to go right back to where it was before. So now we can have him hold his other little blaster here to take out some protocol droids or astromechs, and he holds it just fine. Omega's hand is very good for blasters, as you can see here. And basically, to get the cord inside the blaster and inside the pouch on the back, I just use a little bit of Dremel work, got a little hole in there, and then pretty much just weave the string in there with a little bit of glue, and now it stays in there no problem. And I guess the last thing to show off on this figure before I talk a little bit more about how it was produced is as a kind of a last minute bonus, I created this real, really cool um, ion blast effect. So this actually came from a 2000s Royal Guard 3.75 inch scale figure. And this was meant to go on the Royal Guard's Electro Pike. So what I did is I trimmed up the bottom a little bit and then I got part of a sprue from a Bandai model kit and glued it inside. And then what I did after that is I drilled a hole inside, I guess, the socket of each blaster. So now if you want, you can actually screw this ion effect in. And then it will look like he's actually shooting something out of it. And it holds up very well. It doesn't dip down or anything. It stays out very nice and straight. Now let's go ahead and see what he's like with the other blaster, which is my personal favorite. I like to think of this one more as um, Deco more than anything else. This is what I think of as the trademark Jawa Ion Blaster. This one also fits in Omega's hand, no problem at all, as you can see right here. So you just twist it right in. You can also use that um, up and down hinge to your advantage, so it goes a little bit more straight out. And then, first of all, let's try getting him into a double-handed pose, as you kind of saw at the beginning of this video, but now we'll see it in action. Turn this hand up, kind of work with the elbow joint a little bit, and then slide the fingers around that little end right there. And yeah, he holds it just fine. And then it can also be raised a little bit, so it's a little closer to eye level, but... Long story short, the old figure, which we'll take a look at, it couldn't get nearly as close as this. So we'll do a little bit of a comparison afterwards. And then, of course, you can also add this ionization or whatever effect to this side, which is what it was more meant for when I was building it. And that also looks fantastic. And I also liked turning it a little bit sideways, so that way it's a little bit easier to see it kind of coming out. And then it doesn't just look like blaster shot coming out. So that helps it to have a little bit more dimension. So now that we've had a little look at what my off-world Jawa version 2 is all about, we can talk about what went into actually putting him into one piece. So as you can see on the left, uh, we have a, a very ghastly looking, very small body mold, which was the original body mold that we had for this Jawa, which really ticked me off. Like, it looks very good, and I guess when you take off the soft goods, you kind of get an appreciation for the sculpt work that Hasbro did, despite it being covered up by the soft goods, but... It's, as a body, with articulation, it's just not great at all by any stretch of the imagination. So you could see the elbows, they don't even get up to 90. The shoulders are, um, not great either. Like, even pushing them in, they, like, you'd hope that they could at least hit 90 when they're looking from the top, um, and then hit 90 with the chest. But unfortunately, it's not what we're getting right over here. Uh, the elbows, uh, yeah, there's just not a whole lot of dynamic stuff going on. And I think both of the wrists are in and out. And the thing that most pushed me to do this custom is the Jawa could not properly hold the Ion Blaster. Like, yeah, he can grip it, but that's pretty much as creative as it can get. Like, the best you can do is have him holding it straight out, which doesn't make a lot of sense, really. Like, you can kind of, eh, like, do a little bit of that, but... When you, as soon as you start moving the arms up from the shoulders, like swivel it up, then you see that the arms start to gravitate off to the side and they get further and further apart. So there's just no way to get him in a proper two-handed pose. Like, I guess you could use force perspective, but like even if you turn the wrist, then the blaster just leaves you. And then that's again why the up and down hinge in the Omega mold is so useful. 
But the Omega figure, meanwhile, um, again, this is the one that we reviewed in a video, and then the old one that I had obviously went into this Jawa. You could see a very profound difference in the structure of this figure and the articulation. Like, you can articulate the elbows to a pretty good 90, which is be already better than what we had on the Jawa. I guess we'll do some side-by-side -side comparisons at least. So, you get that, and also the sculpting on the sleeve makes a world's difference. Like, over here, it's very, very puffy, so you can't get a lot of wrist action. It kind of obstructs the blaster when it's in his hands. So, But over here on Omega... Uh, you just have basically a tube, which is her sleeve, and then you get the up and down joint there, which allows the blaster to fit in really nicely. Better yet, if you work with the elbows, which you're actually able to do with this particular figure, then you can get her into a nice two-handed holding uh, position right there. So basically, when it came to getting these sp these figures spliced together, the really big step, of course, to start with was swapping out the heads, which was a little bit on the dicey side, especially since you're talking about figures from two totally different eras of Star Wars The Black Series. The Jawa is one of the earlier ones, which is pretty evident just by looking at it. For one thing, you would notice that over here we have the original style um, ball joint, which clearly I broke. Even then, it couldn't do much just because of how big and engulfing the Jawa head sculpt was. So that joint is just not that great. And then you come over here to the much more modernized Omega figure. She has the dumbbell joint up here within the neck, and then she has a single ball down here. So basically what I did is I got these two guys in hot water, I popped off the Jawa's head first, and as I did that, I actually just wound up breaking the joint. So then I came to Omega, and I popped her head off, so then what I was able to do is leave that dumbbell joint inside and then put the Jawa head on top and I noticed later on that the head was a little bit on the loose side but I put a little bit of model magic clay up there and it helped it to give it a little bit more tension which is a lot better. And then after that, it was just a matter of putting back on all of the Jawa's clothes and then painting afterwards. But to give him a little bit more shape up here, so that way the holsters kind of meet up with the hood a little bit better, I gave him the Black Series Bad Batch version of Captain Rex, um, his pauldron, and I put that around his neck. So that raises the bandoliers and pouches a little bit higher. And ironically enough, I removed his pauldrons for the reason... For the total opposite reasons why I put it onto the Jawa. When I had the pauldron on the Rex, it was pushing the helmet up, which I didn't want, so I just went under the soft goods and got rid of it, and it wasn't even complete. It didn't even have that shoulder piece, which is very strange, so I thought it best just get rid of it, and now the helmet fits on a lot more snugly. So I took that piece, and then I removed the pouch from it that was on the front, and then I put it around the neck of the Jawa. So now, you see a little bit of extra structure underneath the belt here? That is where the pauldron is. Kind of sells the illusion that it's all one piece, and it's all one figure. And then after that, that's when I put on the soft goods, and I put on the bandoliers. And it's also worth mentioning that I took the bandolier off the original Jawa by using a knife, because I couldn't find a peg or a glued spot or anything. So I basically took my knife, and I cut it right about there. I basically glued that end of the belt underneath this cross section right there, and now that holds everything nice together and a little more streamlined. And then one other thing I should mention is that I actually removed Omega's skirt. I was thinking of keeping that for a time because I thought it would help it to um, give it a little bit more of a shape. Basically, I applied the paint before I removed Omega's skirt, and then that's when I started to see that edge kind of pop out. So I went back in there, took a knife, and I just cut it right off. So you could see very quickly, without even needing a cut in the camera, I could just get him right down into a nice knee down position, and he looks just fine. Gotta work the torso a little bit, but uh, yeah, looks pretty good. And then you can also get him double-handed, so you can try that as well. And it's nice, lickety split, I love this Omega body, and then he turns out really cool. And that's basically it to say about my custom off-world Jawa. Um, I'm very happy with the way he turned out, and I hope that this is a mod you're considering to make your Jawa display a little bit more interesting and a little bit more varied between all the different members of your little tiny Sandy clan that we have over here. Only Jawas I have are Tika and, um, of course, the Jawa we've been talking about. As you can see, the height is um, almost the same. And basically, if we put them standing together, 
then you can kind of see that Omega is just a hair taller, but that's okay. There are shorter Jawas, there are taller Jawas, so that kind of all adds up. And as for this fodder body that I have, it's not totally useless. It could be used for a figure that maybe wouldn't be holding blasters or something like that. I've seen a lot of people actually turn this into a young Anakin from the Phantom Menace, so this is probably also a very good figure when just making background characters like other kids, young aliens, um, whatever you like, other scavengers. So um, this is to be thrown away. That's still a nice looking body. It's just not that functional at all. That's what a fodder bin's for. You put all your extra pieces in there, all your kibble, all your fodder. And then one day, if an idea springs to your mind, then you'll be happy that you have it. But that being said, I'm really happy with how this mod turned out. I hope that you care to perhaps do it yourself because customizing is a lot of fun and and it can really make uh, some of your figures a lot more enjoyable, especially if you have the money to buy a figure that you're willing to scrap. Also, if you're new to the customizing realm and you're kind of on the fence as to whether you want to do it or not, if you dig around eBay, you could see a lot of people just selling um, lots of spare parts and then you can get a lot of fun out of that. I think that's kind of how I started customizing. I'm going to keep thinking about of other ideas for um, showcases and tutorials. I think I'd like to do a tutorial on using hot water to fix the warping on a figure. I think that's kind of a big deal. And now my neighbor is abusing their plumbing once again, which basically means I have to wrap up this video. So um, I'm not going to ramble on any further. I hope you enjoyed what you watched. And if you did, then please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. O oh, anger, a dark lord of the Sith. And there's not much else to say, although I will mention that I do have quite the pile of loot generating within my Big Bad Toy Store account, so that means we're going to be seeing a lot more fresh unboxing figures on this channel. Um, Japanese Spider-Man, better known as Supida man NECA's Invisible Man, also have Star Wars Black Series, Mara Jade, and Mike, and then a couple of surprises here and there. So we're having some of my absolute favorite characters come in that I'm really excited for, and I hope they look really good, and if they're not, then well, that's what these reviews are for. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you're having a fantastic week. And I will see you all later. Other What's it called again? One minute. I was going to say Otherworld Java. That's not quite right. Yeah, it's one of those things where if it's a hobby that... Oops. <laughs>